Hello, I'm Omen, and this is my latest art piece for the month of February. It's called Envy. So, my goal with this piece uh, was to do something a little different for February. February is traditionally considered to be a month of love, positive feelings, um, things of that nature. So, a lot of artwork that comes out during this time of year tends to be, you know, Valentine's exchanges, hearts, flowers, you know, the traditional usual stuff. I wanted to do something a little different um, and also something that would present more of a unique challenge for me. So I was thinking something along the lines of what, what would stand out, what would be a little different to do. And I thought, why not do one of the seven deadly sins? So in picking that process, what I ended up doing was just going on a website, finding all the list of them, and doing a random number generator. And that led me to pick Envy as my particular sin uh, for this piece. Um, so that was uh, the first big hurdle because if I'm being honest the word envy doesn't really spark anything in me um, I don't really think of any particular thing when I hear the word envy uh, you know outside of jealousy um, which you know is still in the Valentine, well, still in the February theme of, of love, but like on the negative side of things. So I, I found it interesting that that was the one that I ended up picking. I was, you know, people advise, oh, you can do lust instead. And I was like, ah, oh, I feel like that's that's a little too easy. Let me let me do the challenge of of envy here. So what I ended up doing was just, you know, some general research on. Um, motifs for it because I, I was seriously drawing a blank when I was doing the planning for this um, and just a general search led me to themes of like witchcraft, hoodoo, voodoo, snakes, the color green kept popping up a lot um, for different types of motifs, you know, money, um, things of, of that nature, things that people would be envious of. And I was thinking, I want it, I want this to be a symbolic piece, but I don't want it to be necessarily representational of any one thing. So I thought, what can I do to make this actually challenging, but also interesting? So snakes were the first big thing. Um, I wanted to make sure that for every piece that I do for this this personal challenge of mine each month, that I was going to do something that I had not necessarily done before. And I don't draw snakes that often. Um, I'm nothing against snakes. They're a little scary to me, but I, I don't have anything personally against them. I just think that they are very detailed. And as you can see here, I detailed indeed they are. I spent a lot of time getting these scales to flow up and down the body of the, of the snake um, to get it to look like not only the flow of the snake around the arm and everything, but also the flow of the scales on the snake looked correct. Um, and the next thing that I ended up picking was kind of like a, uh, a sort of hoodoo theme, well, well voodoo theme. Now, I didn't go too hard on that, or at least I tried not to go too hard on that because I didn't want that theme to overshadow the overall idea of what I was trying to go for here. So I chose to keep it very simple, doing a mask, beads, some feathers, just to kind of give the general idea of what was going on there. I draw a lot of black and brown people. so. The next big thing was the hair. Now, as you, as you probably saw earlier, originally she was supposed to have a sort of straight hairstyle. And then I was like, no, nah, let's do braids. And then I was like, no, 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 let's do, let's do dreads. We like dreads. Dreads are fun. Um, so I played around with that here. Um, played around a lot with um, some new brushes that I had recently downloaded uh, to get that look just right. I, I'm really proud of how it came out. Um, inking these scales was just as annoying um well not annoying it was just as tedious tedious is a better word it was just as tedious as the sketching um 
perhaps a little more so because uh, while this top part came out really well in my sketch, um, I could tell right around um, around this point that some of my scales were not 100% lining up to where I wanted them to be. So it was a lot of a little bit of you know adjusting here and there to get it just right the way I wanted it. And the goal wasn't to be realistic necessarily. It was really just to try to establish a, a very good or at least a decent flow with how the scales worked. Uh, I it's a learning process. I don't usually do scales. I usually don't work to this level of detail in my day-to-day -day work. But that was the point of this. The point of it was to to be a challenge. I want to, to learn and grow as an artist, so I was like, let me do things that I've never done before uh, to, you know, expand and grow. Um, and he, as I got used to it, you know, and drawing the, the scales over and over and over again, it became a little easier for me as I continued to, to do it. And, you know, I, I really like how I was able to get the variety of, of scale sizes too. You know, around those tight bits, the scales are much smaller. And then, you know, when you have the flat parts that are facing, you know, the, the viewer, they, they're, they're big and wide. Um, and that tail, oh, that tail, <laughs> that tail was a lot. Um, I think I made the scales a bit too small in that area, but I, I, I like how it turned out. It's not the most realistic thing, but you know, it is what it is. So picking the colors for this, I, I, the only thing I knew for certain in regards to my color planning was that green was going to be the main color. I usually do not paint in green, um, mostly because it's not really a color that I enjoy looking at. I have nothing against green. Um, I just prefer different cool colors. I like cool colors. Um, green is a cool color in, in, in the hue spectrum, but it's just not it's my least favorite of the cool colors. So it was unique, a unique challenge for me to, to use green a lot. Um, I was playing around with skin tones there trying to get exactly what I wanted there. So um, then here was, you know, just working on highlights and everything for the body because when, when I was painting her, I knew that all of these colors were not really going to be seen. Um, I knew that the final image that was in my mind was going to have a backlighting that was going to leave a very bright kind of outline on both the snake and the woman. Um, but foundation colors are important and I wanted to make sure that the foundation was good with, you know, skin tone, shading, lighting in, in the most natural sense. Um, shading was a unique challenge because I was like, you know, I want I wanted to have good shading, um, but I need to make sure that the shading matches up well with the light source that I, I plan to have. So that's why, you know, the hands went through so many coloring iterations and everything. Um, this is when I first added the darker layer. I was still testing out some skin tones here and um, you can't really see it yet. You'll see it in a moment. Um, but soon I did start to realize that I needed to, to add actual backgrounds, but I held out on that a little bit to focus on obviously, you know, getting the mask painted. I'm actually really proud of how that mouse came out. I I really freehanded it. Um, I had some ideas that I picked up from online about you know voodoo mask, skull mask, um, but I wasn't looking to do anything like super particular um, with that. And you know there's those green outlines, and you, you kind of have to imagine the background until I, I get to it. I I will get to it. I promise. Um, but. The highlighting the hair was was a lot of fun working on the hair in general was fun i, I kind of wish i had saved that for last because it was it was much more fun than i anticipated it being so highlighting the snake was so much work 
And that's when I really realized, oh, I need to put this background here because I couldn't really see the highlights for what I was doing with just the white background. But when you added the background that I was going for, like I said, that backlight there, I could see it so much better. And I said, oh, okay, I I see what I'm doing here. I I, I see where I'm going with this. Um, I am still practicing with lighting. I, it's a process. But the snake also added the unique process because the scales are their own individual things. And I wanted, you know, some of them are highlighted, but they're like highlighted on their edges and they still have dark spots because a snake isn't a flat creature. So that was interesting. I also wanted to add a lot of shading um, to the individual scales to kind of give it a more textured feel. Um, And I think that came out really, really well. Uh, for the textured feel it's a it's a it's a bit lazy my technique but again I'm not the I don't paint snakes on the regular I don't usually work in such detail like this so I was really trying to take my time and and learn and you know try new things um, on my own and see what worked best what looked good um I have a lot of layers of, of, of shading here. Um, I honestly lost count of the number of layers I worked with with this, uh, but I was I was definitely trying to get you know as much as I could um, as far as like the different values of shading in there. So I know with the snakes there is at least three or four layers of, of good shading in there. Uh, the black fingertips just for stylized effort, painting on the face, stylizing there, um, and then I wanted to really, really bring up that 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 backlight, that highlight. So I was playing around a lot with like the lighting at this point, trying to figure out exactly how I wanted it to go. Um, you know, ironing out those details in, in certain areas uh, to make it pop, um, and then playing around with the scales trying to get the lighting just right the line work as well trying to get the lighting just right uh you know uh, and that's when I got that really bright backlight I was like oh yeah that's it that's what I'm going for at this point I realized oh shoot in the sketch there was jewelry and feathers I totally forgot about that so I had no plan at this point and I was just like let me freehand it I don't even care I I felt like I was done and then I wasn't and I was like ah it's fine I'll just freehand it it's, it's not a big deal now those those beads the, the the hanging beads are supposed to have feathers at the end but then I decided no nah, because the feathers I'm gonna draw they're gonna be so much bigger let me just do hair jewelry instead and that's what I ended up doing also the feathers uh I did not follow my sketches but it, it's fine it's fine sketches are just guides uh i used my uh water color brushes for the feathers uh and these these particular brushes are just amazing i love them so much um and they 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 do such a wonderful job of of providing texture um and i'm just free handing these these feathers uh, I will admit that at this point like I said I thought I was pretty much done forgot those details and I was just going back in and just adding them in I was not particularly concerned with making them the best I kind of wish I had given myself a little bit more thought and time with it but it doesn't look terrible um, so I'm not gonna complain then I decided to add a necklace with some teeth just to add a little bit more of those little elements in Fix some lighting on the snake, add a little bit more brightness, got some line artwork up there, and then the background, I want to just make it a little, you know, pizzazzy, make it stand out a little bit. And there you have it. That was it. Thank you so much for watching. You have a great rest of your day. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.